One of the most often overlooked aspects of any forest system isn't the trees themselves, or rather any of this you see growing above ground. Instead, it's the below ground networks created by various mycorrhizal fungi that allow energy and nutrients like carbon or nitrogen to be shared and passed back and forth so that everything here can survive. These fungi attach to all these different species at the root tips, and the manner in which they connect creates communities that groups these species together, whether they be a tree, shrub, liverwort, grass, or even certain species of flowers like orchids, which depend entirely on nutrients from these systems in their early stages of life. Now, energy in an ecosystem always has a way of flowing down from sources of high energy into sinks of low energy, and these fungi act as the plumbing system, so when one tree is, you know, photosynthesizing really well and creating excess energy that it can't use, it becomes a source, and that excess energy flows down into this fungal network towards an energy sink, like a smaller tree in the understory that may not be creating as much energy on its own. This happens seasonally, where evergreen plants in the wintertime will produce more energy to support those who are dormant, which is then reciprocated in the summer when that energy flow reverses as those once dormant plants create more energy to support those who were the source in the wintertime. Similarly, when a tree dies, all the energy it stored flows down into this network, into everything else so that the next generation can grow stronger. Imagine it's sort of like a pump system that oscillates back and forth depending on which individuals are generating or requiring more energy, and in this way, all these different species here are working to ensure that everything here survives so that the ecosystem as a whole can thrive and it's all made possible by the fungi that is sustained by that same flow of energy. It's an incredibly complex and interdependent system that has evolved over millions of years to help these communities adapt to changes over time, but it only really works when there's enough diversity of species and ages in the ecosystem to sustain each other when one is in need. And simplifying these complex ecological systems through clear-cut logging or development ultimately creates weaker ecosystems that have a more difficult time adapting to changes in our broader climate-related systems. So restoring this biological complexity to our forests can better ensure that they're able to adapt so that life here can keep on thriving.